Hi, y'all. This is House Guest, and I am your host, Kenzie Elizabeth. Hi, y'all. Welcome back to the show. I am a bit exhausted, I have to say, if I'm being honest with you guys. Well, actually, welcome back to my bedroom. If you guys are watching on YouTube, we're in my room. I'm very tired, and I needed to film some intros for some upcoming shows, which let me just say, the podcast, the shows, the episodes that we have coming for you are so good and then I'm going to New York end of June and I'm batching a ton of other episodes they're amazing we're doing lots of swaps like it's just it's a good time to be a house guest listener is what I'm getting at but you might be asking Kenzie why are you so exhausted thank you actually thank you for asking yes I did actually run um three miles this morning actually technically 3.1 miles which would be a 5k um I ran that this morning with my new Garmin watch thank you very much and I'm tired oh Actually, guys, as soon as I said that, my Garmin watch went off in the background. I, I'm not even going to edit around that because I just need everyone to know that I do have a Garmin watch. I am, some might say, a professional runner, honestly. Like, it's really been something. I joined Strava, but I do need to be honest with you behind my intentions on joining Strava. I really just joined for attention. Like, I, it, yes, I do like training. I love running. I'm doing that on the Nike Run Club. Like, you join Strava because you want attention. You're not joining Strava for, like, the fitness aspect of it. You know what I mean? Like, get a Garmin watch, download the Nike Run Club, whatever. Like, you're doing it for attention. So I think as long as I'm being honest with you guys, um, I feel good about it. So if you guys want to follow me on Strava, feel free. Um, today's episode is a really, really great one. We have Sif back on the show. We're doing a little podcast swap. This is actually our second. So if you guys want to go back and listen to the first two, you really get four episodes out of this, okay? Sif is the founder of Array, which I love Array, actually. I think on my night stand, if y'all can see right there, I have Array on my night stand, and then I have it in my bedroom or in my bathroom. And then I have it in my bathroom. I love Array and I love Sif. And then she also has a podcast with Dear Media called The Dream Bigger Podcast. It is really good. Like if you like the episodes on this podcast that are more productive, more routines, more habits, all those things, which I feel like are everyone's favorite besides like the friend episodes, you would love her show. I listen to it regularly. I'm a huge fan. I love her. We're talking habits. We're talking routines. We're talking creating the life that you want to live. Y'all are going to love this episode. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode. As always, if y'all are watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe to our podcast channel and then leave a nice rating and review if you're feeling it. Anyways, let's welcome Sif on to the show. I have been seeing some things and I'm disinterested. Okay, so, oh my God, I don't even know where to start. So I'm calling this season my hot girl summer prep season. I love that. Okay, because number one, the weather is getting so nice. And so I just want to be outside all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so number one thing is I've been walking 12,000 steps a day. Mm -hmm. Casual. I, but like I do it while taking my meetings and I feel like I think better when I'm walking. Okay. Yeah. And then I have a question. Well, you just have like a note taker. Sometimes when I'm, I always want to take meetings when I'm walking. Yeah. But then I just like stress out thinking I need to be on my, I just need to stick to it and so, just stick to my gut. Yeah. It depends on the kind of meeting, right? So okay. say, say for example, I have to like really like sit there and analyze like something visual. Then obviously I can't be out on my walk. But like, for example, like the, for me, like, I'll tell you exactly which meetings I know I'm definitely going to take walking are marketing weekly. What are we doing? We're going over like either like marketing efforts that are underway or brainstorming. I love walking for brainstorming reasons. Like, I feel like I'm much more alert and I have better ideas than if it's a product formulations meeting. I'll take that walking. If it's a weekly sales forecast, I'll take that walking. Basically things that you know, I don't have to like be staring at my screen if I'm reviewing a deck or if I'm, you know, pitching. That's a different story, mm -hmm. you know. So like you have to pick and choose. But like those are the ones that I'll take while walking. And like, I don't know, I feel like I'm I'm like so much better for it. You know, like the yeah. 12,000 steps has made me a better person, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Also, this is what's crazy. So I just listened to a podcast, which I send over to like everyone I know. Basically, if you are walking less than 8,000 steps a day and still working out, you still tend to be workout resistant, like exercise resistant, because it's like your your body needs to be moving throughout the day. So there was like actually a study that was published and it was like two control groups. It's really interesting. I just heard it on a podcast. So that's been like my new hyperfixation. Wow. Yeah. Walking. Wait, I want to be added to your list of people that you send podcasts to. Yeah. Hell yes. We I should will. start a big group chat. We can add Maggie. I have a couple people we can add and then you just send it over. Yeah, love it. Oh my gosh. Yes, absolutely. Yes, we need to do this. So that's one thing um, that I've been hyper fixated on. What else have I been doing? Okay, so this is, I've not talked about this on my podcast, but it's like a new hyper fixation. Okay, so 
Um, my assistant's roommate is like this, like she's like such a good chef. So I went to my assistant's birthday party and like her roommate had like made this like unbelievable meal, like wings, like homemade ranch. Who does that? Right. Mm-hmm. Sasha, Smith. But it's yeah. true. The, Literally, so her yeah. name, by the way, Sasha's table, if anyone wants to hit her up. But um, I was like, are you Nara Smith? Like, what the hell is this? Literally. So I had all this like yummy food at Mackenzie's birthday party. And so then Nish and I are like, I mean, we're slammed with work right now. And so normally I would do our meal prep on Sundays. Like and by meal prep, I don't mean like like I just mean like prepping things. So like if I need to cook them, like, for example, I'd marinate salmon or like I'd make like the basics for a big salad. Like I'll make the dressings, all of that. But it got to a point where like I was really busy during the week and then Sunday would roll around. And I'm like, OK, like I've just been like prepping for like three hours, whatever. So Sasha does our meal prep for us now. OK, so she like, you know, cooks all our food. And so I wanted electrolyte popsicles. So she made this is like the best thing you will ever eat for the summer. OK, so it's strawberries, basil and element electrolytes. Wow. No, I just... That's genius. It is so good. It's like the best treat after dinner. Like I, I'm like thinking about it and I'm salivating and Mm -hmm. I literally cannot wait for my protein heavy dinner so that I can have my popsicle afterwards. Let's talk about protein. I'm, I'm also on on your journey. I'm on my journey (laughs) of trying to eat as much protein as possible. What meal, snacks, smoothies, like what are you doing to up your protein intake? Okay, so every day I start with um, a smoothie, which is 40 grams of protein. So I do two scoops of protein. What powder do you use? Um, the Clean Simple Eats one. Okay. It is, I, I like, they. you know how you feel about chilies? Yeah. I, I feel that way about <laughs> Clean Simple Eats. I'm like, I, the, the difference of between con- us is that I love chilies <laughs> and you love Clean Simple Eats. But I'm like, why won't you notice me? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I love you guys so much. Yeah. Like, please. Maybe someone listening is on the team. There's always someone listening from one of their yeah, teams. Yeah, I'm like, damn, like, can you hire me? Like, yeah. damn, like, all I like, do hello. is, like, I, all I do is tell everyone about them. People buy it. Like, I uh-huh. post, con- like, I cannot, anyway, so I'm obsessed with their powders. And for the longest time I was just doing the vanilla, I recently ordered the chocolate and my new favorite smoothie, which like even like Nish had it the other day. And he's like, this is like literally tastes like dessert. So it's raspberries, half a cup of almond milk, half a cup of water, ice, two scoops of the um, Clean Simple Eats chocolate powder. Okay. Like the chocolate Mm -hmm. protein powder, um, hazelnut butter and spinach. I love hazelnut. So good. It literally tastes like a chocolate raspberry. I'm gonna make this. nutty like like milkshake. It's so good. So that's 40 grams of protein. And I used to do one scoop, and then I switched it to two. And it was after having Kelly Levesque on my podcast. Mm-hmm. You should have one if you haven't mm-hmm. yet. Um, but yeah, like that. And then um, during the day, I'll do like typically for lunch like a salad with a lot of chicken. And for dinner, I've been doing these like kimchi bowls. So it's like half Love. a pound of ground beef then a lot of kimchi and then broccoli and um, baby bok choy. And then if I get hungry before my workout, then I'll do like um, a crave beef jerky or mm-hmm. a chomps like beef jerky. Like that's my go to chomps. So good. And then I end the day with like the protein, like the sorry, the, the electrolyte popsicle. But yeah, like that's how I've been getting my protein. And essentially what I've noticed for me is that as I've upped my protein intake, number one, like my satiety is like so much better, you know, so like I'm just like what satiety. So like I'm like more satiated after meals. Oh, God. You know? so I was like, like, I don't even know that word. Yeah. yeah so okay. like you're just like fuller. <laughs> yeah, and like same, you, same. Right. Like and you operate better. I feel like you're more focused. I can focus. Exactly. And like my hair is so much better than it's ever been in my life. Like, and I've, I've always had like pretty like healthy hair, but this is like taken it to a whole different level. Like, I feel like I have like hair growing from like every side of my head. Like, it's really crazy. And like, I don't know, just more energy levels. I'm able to lift heavier at the gym. So like all of those things are really important. And then the last thing I will say about protein is that I also love to take the Keon aminos. I put it in my water. And again, like this sounds like an ad, but like, I love them too. They're yeah. so good. They're so good. Have you had Angel on your podcast? No, I need to. He's so smart. But like, you know, aminos are like the building blocks of the protein. So you're essentially giving your body like the the thing that it's building, like right, like from the source, mm-hmm. essentially. So I take that in my water while I go to the gym and I weight lift and it's so helpful. Like I'm able to lift so much heavier. My stamina is better when I'm doing cardio days. It's like it's pretty phenomenal. So, yeah, 
I have a cabinet like in my kitchen mm -hmm. where it's like Keon Aminos. I mean, it literally looks like a Dear Media ad space. It's I like know. Keon Aminos. <laughs> it's like my ritual protein powder. All like all of that stuff. Yeah. I have seed. I have. Uh, I mean everything. My athletic greens, like literally all of the it's things. All the right there. I have all my symbiotica, but I am like such a symbiotica girly, even yeah. though I've like kind of been off my game recently. But I have a whole drawer that I take that's underneath my like coffee maker, uh -huh. and it's an organizer of like all of my like symbiotica. Oh stuff. my god, I love that. But like when I get back, I'm locking in. Like I have so I, I'm locking in, and also you know not to bring it up again, but now that I'm a literal athlete runner. I need to be doing these things, you know? It's true. It's so crazy that like when I run a 5K, <laughs> oh, no, literally, like, I'm to gonna me, be, you are an athlete. To me, no, you're a marathoner. I'm an athlete. I was with like an actual ex-athlete recently and I was like making, because like I just speak like that. Like it's just funny to me. I was, I think he thought that I was like trying to be funny because like he was an athlete. Like honestly, my, I wasn't even thinking about him. I was thinking about the fact that I'm an athlete, you know? And I was like, you just like wouldn't get it. But I wasn't saying it because like he quite literally was an athlete. I was yeah. just saying it because I was like, I would say that to anyone. Oh my God, And then that after so I got funny. home and I was like, I completely forgot that he was literally a professional athlete. Like I wasn't even thinking about that. But that's just so me, you know? Anyways, the protein has really helped me. Every morning, even just for me, like we were talking about how it's so important to be decisive. And I feel like in business, it's like the best trait in someone. I agree. I didn't even think about this. Credit or credit's due. My friend TK started talking about it. Well, she said that I was decisive. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so nice because I didn't feel that way at all. And then I started thinking about it and I am. But I have like the same breakfast that I make every single day. And if I am making, which is like ground turkey, eggs, and you know, whatever else I'm putting in that that morning, if I just have the first meal ready to go, it's the same thing every single day until, you know, eventually you wake up one day and you hate eggs and you can't even look at them for the longest time. Um, and you have to like switch your breakfast. It really helps me to stay on track too. I agree. Because then I don't have any sort of like, sh like sweet tooth. That's another thing. I don't have any weird cravings when I'm eating a lot of protein at all. Yes. Yes. I couldn't agree more. And um, I was reading a study about basically like rats. It was done on rats. And essentially like the study was that they were given like regular food and they knew how to like regulate their like how much they were eating. And then they were given like a diet full of like, you know, like processed foods. And they were eating and eating and eating to the point of like obesity in like a few days. And then when that food was taken away. Initially, they didn't even want the regular food. But then when they got back to eating the regular food, they were able to like go back to like I, like following their hunger cues. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting what you're saying about protein <coughs> because it, it, like it scientifically tracks where like it's something that's like nutrient dense that our body craves. And like we don't have cravings outside of that when we're feeding ourselves properly, you know? Yes. And it, I mean, it it's crazy because it's in the same way of like when I'm gardening and I start from seed mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden like I put a seed in the soil, I'm watering it, and then there's a whole plant. It's like mind boggling to me. Like, I trust me, I've known this my whole life. I understand how it works, but it's like actually seeing no, it is true. crazy. And that's how I feel about actually following through with my protein. I'm like, oh, this stuff actually works. Oh, it really does. You know? It like, and I think it's like the easiest hack, like quote unquote, for health because you know, when when we want to like get into like eating healthy, right? And then we're like cutting everything out. I feel like that's such a bad way of thinking about doing something because then it's like very restrictive and mm -hmm. then like you know you want to rebel because you're like craving those things I feel like protein is a really easy way to like crowd everything else out you know like you're so full from the protein that like you don't really have any cravings anymore and like if you want to eat something then you can but like you've done something so good for your body you know yes totally it I feel like it's a healthier it promotes a healthier mindset without even trying agreed you know agreed. it's very nice yes. are there any other things in your routine that you're loving lately or like any wellness hacks what have I been loving lately? I mean, I've been weightlifting for like two and a half years mm -hmm. now. So I feel like that is like, for me, like, I mean, we were just talking about it when you came on my podcast, but like, you feel like you're achieving something, yes. you know, because you're like going heavier and you see yourself getting stronger. Like for me, um, two big goals that I've had this year is I really want to get to 10 full push-ups and I want to get to one full pull-up. I've never been mm -hmm. able to do it in my life. Um, I, I was telling you I had breast reduction. So like just historically, I've had like a very large, like, you know, like heavier upper body. And so those are two things that I've like historically struggled with. And so this year, my entire workout plan is geared towards like being able to accomplish those two things. And like, you know, even just the other day, like being able to do like, I don't know, like getting closer to a pull up, for example, it's like such a gratifying feeling. It feels like, oh, my gosh, like I'm accomplishing, accomplishing something that I was never able to do before. Like, you know, being able to like deadlift 120 pounds, like when that's not something you were able to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's just like these moments that you have while weightlifting that are, it's like it's an accomplishment outside of work. And yes. 
that to me is like very important. So I love weightlifting. Um, I, like I just I think that it just brings me so much joy and clarity and like, I don't know, just helps me bookend my day as well. So weightlifting as opposed to other workouts for me, I've loved so much because I've been able to see like the tangible differences. Yeah. You're going up in weight. It almost, it feels a lot more like personal to you. Yes. I do it actually in a class. Yeah. Like but there's only 10 of us and it's the coaches like walking around. We're all like pretty tight. We go every single day. We've been going for, I've been going probably for two and a half years at this point mm-hmm. too. And I love that, but I love the idea. I love being able to see that you're getting better and something is working and you're working towards something. The same reason I love running right now. But like with Pilates, I love Pilates and I love it to just like zone out. Mm-hmm. But I like, yeah, things get, like, easier, mm-hmm. but they're not, like, like, I, I can't, like, see my, so you're not, like, oh, I was lifting 20 and now I'm yes. lifting 100, yes. you know? Yes, it's a little bit less, like, tangible in that sense. I love Pilates, too. I, like, typically try to do it, like, once a week. Like, that's, I Same. consider it, like, my mobility slash, like, conditioning. But the weightlifting, the three times a week that I do it, also, the science behind weightlifting and its impact on longevity is something yeah. I'm really interested in. Same. Like, I'm working on grip strength really, like, aggressively as well. So, like, all of those things, I just, I think it makes you healthier. I want to, like, I don't know, like, I want to, I want to, like, basically have a very long health span. And so you that's see. what I'm working towards. It's the best for aging. Yes. What my biggest fear in life is carpal tunnel. Mm. It is my, because if I get carpal tunnel, it's over for me. Yeah, who's who's going to needle point? Who's going to needle point? Who's going to garden? Who's going to cook? Who's going to do quite literally anything that I do? Yeah. I will be, my life will be over if I yeah. get carpal tunnel. And just in my head, I feel like that is helping against carpal tunnel. Yeah. But also, like, now that I'm thinking about it, it actually could be worse. Yeah. Holding it. But like, well, g- no, gaining strength in general, I'm just thinking like holding the bar. No, I don't. I, I feel like, I mean, oh grip God. strength in general is supposed to be like something that you are, like, if you work on it, then like, it is like one of the things that... Um, helps with like health span and just like um, uh, like basically preventing all cause mortality by a certain percent. So okay. I feel like you're in the clear. I would think. Okay, but good, like good. I would look into the like how weightlifting helps with car, car like preventing carpal tunnel. Yeah, because it is like literally my biggest fear. Oh my I God. I found out about it. Oh, well, I obviously I knew it existed, but then like my friend said she couldn't need a point because she has carpal tunnel, and then I started thinking, and I was like, oh my God, and then I googled carpal tunnel, and it was like. Because I was like, this is terrifying. And it literally comes up and it's like common in gardeners, chefs, needle pointers. And I was like, oh my God, it's literally everything that I no. do. So I'm going to like, where I, and you get surgery for it. Yeah. It's a whole thing. So anyways, that's something that like, I am not. You're going to, you're determined not to get ever. I'm determined. Yeah. But I want to be that grandma that is like buff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like I want to be that grandma that like is doing more. Than like anyone in the family so like I want to be out like I'm wait like I want to be that girl I want to be running five miles on the beach one of my best friends her grandma I don't even know how old she is but like my friend is my age she's 32 and her grandma is still out here like fucking hosting dinner parties mm-hmm. she makes all this food she like looks like so vibrant I've never seen a grandma look like this in my life I'm like how old are you Goals. like you are my goal Goals. if I'm not you when I'm like 80 something I don't want it yeah <laughs> I um, watched the Martha Stewart Masterclass uh-huh. and I always tell people it's like I got the Wait, same Wait, is it on YouTube or like where is that? It's on Masterclass. I like wanna, it's literally should I, Masterclass. Should I, should I watch it? Yeah, you should definitely watch okay. it. First off, I love Masterclass. Like the way that they're shot. Have you ever watched one? No, but I'm like always tempted because I get served the ads. Yes. So you would love it and it's not even that I learn I do learn different things than you would get elsewhere, but it's the way that it's shot. Mm-hmm. It, it like makes you, f- it, it like evokes a feeling I can't even describe. Like when mm-hmm. I watched the Martha Stewart one, it was like, I felt like I was like thir- 12 and I was at like youth camp and it was like an evangelical youth camp. And it's like all these things were like, that's what it felt like to me, you know, watching the Martha Stewart masterclass. Okay, I need to watch this. It just gave me like a spiritual experience. That I'll never, I'll never okay, find tell me, tell me more about this masterclass. So it goes through her day-to-day, which I love. And this is actually what I want to go through with you. But it also, what I got out of it that was the most beneficial to me, which is also what I want to go through with you, is how she built her team. And they show, like, the tree of Martha Stewart and, like, Omni Media mm. and everything underneath it. Because obviously she has, similar to, like, Jolly Parton, a billion different businesses and a billion different people working. And there's so many different sections. And, like, it was so interesting. She's such because a boss. She's such a boss. Ugh, it gives like her, her day to day. She's like up at 5 a.m. doing Pilates or yoga every morning. Iconic. It's iconic. And just like the little things she does every day that make things work. And then also more than that, like the team and how things are structured. Because that is the stuff that people are not like pulling the curtain back on as much. So I really liked it. I love Masterclass. I've watched like gardening ones. I've, I mean, I've watched so many of them. I watched, um, I think, Alice Winters, who is, I believe she's like, I could be totally, totally getting her name wrong, but like the one that was basically the mother of like farm to table. Mm. And she teaches you how 
to like grocery shop or not grocery shop, how to shop at a farmer's market. I've never, I've never Wait, strayed I need to watch it. this. That sounds amazing. It's really amazing. You just learn so many things. And I'm like curious about everything. Like so if am I. I'm at the farmer's market, I'm talking to the people. I'm asking them questions. Like there's like someone who's selling plants at the farmer's market and I'm asking questions about my garden. And that's how I have gotten so many amazing tips. I also think that's like, largely why I've gotten to where I am in my career because I keep asking people questions. Yeah. People love to talk about themselves too, so it like works out. Um, but yeah, I'm like literally always asking a question and Martha Stewart, just like that masterclass. You're really, you've really sold it to me. I feel like I'm going to go home and like download it You really need to. Yeah, it's two amazing. parts. I, okay. And I want it to be more. I literally wow. want it to be. Wow, okay. I, yeah. I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta watch it. And it's nice because it's like, yeah, sure. She went to jail. She went to prison. Right, give it up. There's other things that I have questions about. I've seen so many documentaries about it. I know everything about it. I, I know. I want to know about the business behind it. I want to know. Like, I feel like the prison time really kind of overshadows things. But, no, but also, also name somebody else who is so iconic that like they went yes. to jail and still like for the most part, like I don't, I don't she care. She made more money when they were in jail. Yeah. Way. I'm like, yeah. I, I also, I, I don't care. Like you're At still all. so interesting. Like you're yes. this like 80 year old woman or I don't even know how old she is. She's like I mean, she's like yes. youthful to me. Yes. And I'm like, I want to be that youthful when I'm that yes. age. Like, how do I become you? She's coming out with her 100th book too and like this fall. But the thing about oh. why I don't care about the prison part is just because everyone's covered it. So it's yeah, like when you go on a boring. podcast and you're asking people questions that you could Google or the same things that they're no, giving boring. everywhere else. Boring, it's boring. boring. Yeah. And like, that's how I feel about people who keep asking her about prison time. Yeah. Like, unless it's like a funny, dry humor. Like, I love that. But like, I have other questions. You I know? agree. They could have given me five more minutes of that little business trick. And that would have done something for me. Yeah. Also, you know? like that, that's the thing. I find that that's the least interesting thing about her. Yes. That's what, exactly. Literally, exactly. Okay. So I want to talk to you about business. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> Mainly, I mean, I have so many questions. I, well, Obviously, she is the founder of Array to the listeners. I mean, I would have said this already, but I want to talk to you about when y'all started, like who was your first hire? Mm -hmm. Like what position? And why was that the first position that you hired out? So for anyone who is starting a business, I would recommend that when you are starting out, you have to hire generalists before specialists. So when our first hire is still with us, her name's Sho, she's like family to us. Um, we hired her when she was still at Brown pre-med and she came on and she was like, she started as like a summer intern. She had an interest in product development, but she was like willing to do literally any job. And honestly speaking, she has learned so much and she was always very curious. So I still remember um, one day she was like, Nish, um, I'm really interested in understanding how to negotiate. Can I sit in on a call with you? She's the best negotiator on our team right now. Her mm -hmm. and Nish, if we have a negotiation, we like give it to the two of them. Like they will get, I mean, she negotiates her manicure prices. I'm like, wow. this girl is a fucking shark, right? Yeah. So anyway, point is like when you're hiring initially, you have to hire a generalist and then specialist from there. And your early hires, some of them <clears throat> will stay with you because they are willing to like learn and grow with the company and become specialists. And like maybe while they were doing the generalist roles, they always had like a specific area of interest where they like always contributed. And then over time you feel like, okay, like the company's grown to a point where I don't need you to be a generalist. You can go into this like one area, which you're really good at. And others where like, you know, as the company grows, maybe they're not able to keep up with the growth of the company, in which case, like, I would say compassionate leadership is like having a very real conversation and sending someone along on their journey and you go on yours, you know, like don't keep someone on just because like you have a history with them if like they're not growing and you're not happy with them because I feel like then it's just a bitter end. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So then after you do like you're initially like generalist and I would say like first five people, like five hires that you'll make should be generalist. And then after that, you can like kind of go into like more specialist positions. And you'll know that based on like where you feel like you're like, you're really struggling. So like, for example, at one point, like I was the only person who was doing all things brand. Okay. And I needed support there. And so then I hired like one more person and then I hired another person. And like, that's when we started to have specialists, but even the specialists it's not like they'll just do their one job. And that's the thing about working at a startup. It's very different from a corporate entity mm -hmm. whereby it's not just, I'm just going to do my job and never do anything else. No, like our head of events, Nick, love him. He was one of our earlier hires and we don't have an event every month, but you know what he does? If there's a photo shoot, he helps with that. If we are producing sweatshirts for like a launch, he will work on that. Like he will make his like skills kind of useful in like other avenues. So that's what I would say about hiring. So when you say generalist, like what were they just basically 
just doing whatever needed to be done at that point. Exactly. So just okay. like Nish and I. So Nish and I, like, by the way, founders, it's not that they're like good at everything. It's just that when you're starting a business, you kind of have to apply yourself in whatever needs to be done. And it's the same with like early employees, right? Like they also have to operate like entrepreneurs too, in the sense that they have to be able to learn and like do everything. And some things they may be really bad at and other things they'll be great at, but that's good because that means that you'll put them on the things that they're really good at. And then when they're progressing in their career, you know exactly where to place them in the company. So for Mm -hmm. example, I'll give you the example of Shosh since we're talking about her already. So she started off like intern. So she did everything from operations. She got our capsule case, like the little um, case that we have for our like storing our like um, capsules, like to go. Um, she developed that with like an engineer. She um, she negotiated so many things. She was in charge of packaging. She helped me with social media. Like she does, she's done everything. Sucks at social media. That's okay. But she did it when I needed her to do it, you mm-hmm. know? And then now like she's like very much in product dev. Like she's leading that side. But that's because she's done everything. And like I think that gives her like so much more range. And like, I don't know, she's just a very strong team member because of it. So yeah, someone who's like willing to do everything and is a keen learner as well. What's your hiring process and what are you looking for? So hiring process is that whatever role we look for, we're very picky. We hire slow, fire, fast. That's like the thing that we go by. And by the way, it doesn't mean that we fired a ton of people. Actually, like we have crazy, crazy good employee retention. Like it's unbelievable. But that's because we hire so slow. So um, usually it's a couple of different rounds of interviews. And typically we always give people a project to complete. So for example, When I hired our director of marketing, um, we had three rounds of interviews with her. The first one was just a call. Then it was, no, sorry, two rounds of interviews. She was really good. Um, First one was just a call with me. And then we met her in person. And essentially, I had her take me through what she would do if we were to launch a product, like exactly like all the 360 elements. And she was able to take me through a plan that was like really solid. Same thing when we hired our head of events. I was like, okay, we are having an event for like a launch. Take me through exactly what that looks like. And he came back with like the most immaculate deck I've ever seen. He's like, this is what I would do. This is the location. This is who I'd use for floors. I was like, damn, this guy's like unbelievable hired, you Mm -hmm. know? So I feel like having a project is really important because like people can just talk, but like you want to make sure that they're actually able to do a really good job too. Also at this stage of our company, because we're still younger, we're just like four and a bit years in. um, A lot of the talent that we get is either like inbound or through referrals within our network. Like um, our head of social, she started off as my EA. She was like really good friends with our director of marketing's little sister. So like it's a lot of inbound like that. So I would say like anyone who's hiring, though, like have a process for like projects and stuff. So you're really able to see if someone is able to kind of deliver the work that they're saying they can deliver. Are there any mistakes that you feel you've made as far as hiring in the past? Yes. Um, So people say like, you know, culture like company culture is really important and it is like truly the most important thing so we say like we only hire juicy peaches okay no Mm -hmm. bad apples only juicy peaches and it's because we want to make sure that every single person on the team is a complete and utter culture fit because what that ensures is, is that there's no drama within the company. Everyone operates like one family. If someone has made a mistake, like people aren't piling on and making them feel bad or talking behind their backs. That's just not how we operate. Everyone's got each other's backs. And we also all know that we are operating towards one big goal. Okay. Like everyone is super aligned. Like there's no taking credit for someone's work. Like we don't have that. We just don't have that. And the mistake that I had made in the past, and I think like it's a very like, it's probably a common thing that people go through is being more lax about who you're hiring just because maybe you need a job done or keeping someone on longer than you should, you know? And like we say, like Nish and I, we have, like we say, we like operate by like one thing, which is If there's a doubt, there's no doubt, which means that if you are doubting if someone should be there, if they're doing their job or if they're a good fit, then that means that there's actually no doubt, because if there's a doubt, then it's a no. Mm -hmm. Like with employees, we're like team members, team building. It's like a yes. Like the, like our hires, the people we have on our team, like I remember distinctly getting off calls with them and I like I'd be like I go to Nish. I'm like, I can't live without this person. Like Mm -hmm. they must be on the team, you know, like. Our um, senior, um, like, head of influencer stuff, right? Like, she's, like, our senior influencer manager. I had a call with her 
And we weren't even hiring for that role. But our head of operations had spoken to her initially. And I spoke to her and I told Nish, I was like, it, like if we don't hire this girl, like we are like losing out. Like she's unbelievable. Like I will make space for her because she will like improve the company. And I was right. So like, I feel like when it comes to hiring, it's like a hell yes, like with every bone in your body. And then if you make a mistake, let them go quickly. How do you create company culture? I think it bleeds down from the founders, honestly speaking. So for us, like we are really hard workers. We are extremely kind. And I think like that kind of like bleeds through. We have no time for bullshit or drama. Like that's just not who Nish or I are. And so if we see that, then like that person's out. Like it's just not how we operate. So like it like bleeds in from there. And then again, like I think hiring the right people who are like a reflection of you and like, you know, that they kind of uphold the same values. It's like a very natural thing that happens. Like everyone in our company is friends, you know, like if someone's birthday is happening, like we're all going, you know, like even for my birthday, like I'm like my birthday's coming up in August. Like, of course, my whole team is invited. Like, why would they not be, you know? Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, like I think like doing those things is really important. And then I think as you work towards a common goal, you just start to connect more. Um, for us, we work in person once a week. And then like even outside of that, people are trickling in and out every other day of the week, honestly speaking. Um, and I think like working in person really does have like a sense of camaraderie that you just can't get otherwise. Like we didn't used to be in person because obviously we started the company when, um, you know, it was like we started it during COVID, mm -hmm. like height of COVID. So we weren't in person then. But um, we started to implement once a week, obviously, like in the last year specifically, um, because that's when Nish and I moved into our house, which is our office. And it's made the world of difference because everyone's seeing each other, you know, and like you get to chit chat and you like connect with each other. And it's it's just like it's really sweet. Like, I feel like I've built the workplace that I wish I could have worked at. And that was like such a goal for Nish and I. So really proud of that. But I think it comes from you. Like if you if you are the problem, your your team is going to be a reflection of that, because if you're here like talking shit and creating clicky, like weird vibes in the company, it's just going to bleed down because you are it's like you like the same as like parent and kids, you know, like your kid is a reflection of who you are. So like you want to be a good example. You know, it's the same thing. Absolutely. How do you have the conversations of letting someone go? It's hard. It's hard. But like, it's usually like, I, like, I don't know, like honest that like, it's usually like not just it's not usually, you know, taking someone by surprise. Like yeah. we usually have a few conversations about performance. And then when it's time to go, like, unfortunately, you just like let them know that like, you know, we're here to support you. We'll like write any letter of recommendations. Like we're, we're here to help in whatever way we can. We've never had a situation where we've let someone go and it's been like, um, like it's, it's it's been like any sort of animosity. Like we don't do that. Like that's not how we operate. We've also not had like nasty people on our team. It's mm -hmm. just been like people who maybe haven't been the right fit or like just goals have deferred. And so usually it's been like a pretty amicable parting of ways. So if you've been like consistent in your feedback and honest and you're not like, I don't know, catching someone just by surprise, by surprise I think that there's like a nice way to do it. And then like obviously being there, like being as supportive as you can be for like the next step of their job is, I mean, I would say this would be different if like, I don't know, we had like employee from hell, but that's mm -hmm. just not happened to us. So like we're happy to like help someone in the next stage of their career if they ever need it. That just sounds like the least fun part about being a boss. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it's like, it's not good. Um, We've only ever let go of two people and... What was it? Nish has done one and I've done the other. So, okay. yeah, it's it's not fun, but, you know, it happens sometimes and it's just part and parcel of doing the job. Totally. What has been your biggest like ROI as far as marketing has gone? Like maybe something that's like really surprised you that sold a ton of product. Hmm. I mean, it can be like gifting, I feel like is very underrated, like especially if you're a brand that doesn't have any budget, which we didn't because we didn't raise money when we started the company. So we had no budget, but we gifted really heavily. And um, I think when you gift to a ton of people, you will see that slowly people will start talking about it. And I feel like right at the very beginning, like that's something that really helped the company. Like it was just a lot of people talking about us from gifting. So I feel like that's like underrated, but it really does work. And it works to this day. Like if I were to start a business today, I would still gift heavily. So that's number one. 
number two is um, creating something that can potentially go viral in your packaging itself. So for us, when we started the brand, we would put a Polaroid into every order, like every customer order. And so people started to share that Polaroid because they thought it was really like wholesome. Mm -hmm. And um, we would do it because we were genuinely grateful for every single customer that we had. And like we wanted to feel like we could connect with them beyond just like, here's the product. Like it was like Nish and I behind the company and we wanted to show people our gratitude. And so that like find like whatever it is that's like viral and like allowing someone to connect with you. You know, I feel like nowadays, if people can't connect with the company, they can't buy into it, you know? So for us, your brand almost needs to feel like a person. And that's like through social as well. Like you can't have this like perfect like brand account with no personality. I feel like people want to feel like they can connect with the brand. And so they need to see like the people behind it. And if you as a founder aren't like a you know, forward facing founder, like, I don't know, like have your team in there, like have like the Duolingo bird, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's some element that people can connect to. I feel like that really allows people to feel like bought into the brand and feeling like they are a part of something. And then the last thing I would say is put as much effort as you do into like influencer stuff into your community, because your community is the one that's buying your products and you want them to feel like influencers because they are like, Mm -hmm. if we think about just how we behave as consumers, like, yes, like I buy things when an influencer posts about it online. But if my best friend tells me to buy something like you best believe it's in my cart already, you know? So like everyone's an influencer. And I think TikTok has taught us that like the the democratization of the influencer has happened in front of our eyes where like, it's just Sally from down the street whose video goes viral. And now she's like a ginormous creator, you know? So I feel like treating your consumers as influencers is the best tip that I can give you. And it's a little bit slower of a burn, but I feel like it really pays off because you have the most loyal community if you feel like you ride for your community. You know, if they Mm -hmm. feel like your brand is centered around that, then they will like give back and they'll be be the ones to tell your tell their friends and like just sing your praises and that stuff adds up. We just I mean, we're like eight months old and we've done a bunch of like community dinners because mm-hmm. obviously with the home brand like a lot of dinner parties and we'll just like partner with restaurants and do community dinners and that's been like the most rewarding thing even just as like a founder it's been so rewarding for me to like be face to face with the consumer and like see what they really like the most and then also I just feel so much more connected yes I think just because my career has always been online and it's always been about like connecting with the audience so it's been really helpful for me to do stuff like that and like keep that going on the brand in yeah because i i myself feel more connected and then i know they obviously feel more connected and they're more loyal and then i see them around we've only done them in dallas so far but like i'll see them around dallas and it's like they're all playing their cards or taking them places people are asking and it's like they're really doing the work you know yes and then also i think what it allows you to do is hone in on exactly what your consumer wants like yes i know our girls so well I've gone out for dinner. Like we used to do the same thing, by the way, like in our second year of business, we would do like community dinners where Mm -hmm. we just literally like book out a private room at a restaurant and have this like, like literally like influencer level dinner, but it was for our customers and they would be so excited. And like, like then you just learn everything there is to know, you know, like, what are they liking? What are the problems they're struggling with? What are their favorite product? It's literally like a consumer survey, but you're doing it in real time. It's unbelievable. It's really helpful. I've even hired people that have come to the dinners. Like, it's been really, um, it's just been so amazing. But also even it's nice too, because when there's like certain dinners and stuff, it's like, I'll tell them like the stuff that's coming out. And it's been really awesome. Like even we were doing Needlepoint and they were like so excited about Needlepoint. And I was like, when we launched that, I was a little bit concerned because it's so niche and it's like so grandma. Yeah. But I had been posting about it for the past six months anyway. So people were like into it. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, we're doing a stitch club. So like everyone can come. Like that's like literally next week as we're recording where everyone's like coming and bringing their canvas and we're like like, needle pointing together. It's like so fun. Like you sit around, like you gossip, like not like really gossip, but you know, it's just like a a fun. It's like a good time. But I use the word gossip interchangeably with chit chat. Like it's more fun to say gossip. But Um, no, it's just like so much fun. And I've been able to learn so much about just like our actual consumer. So I love doing that stuff, even just from like the entertainment, like selfishly, I love doing that. Yeah, I agree. We, we launched Magnesium. What was it in March? And we had, um, in my backyard, we hosted like 30 of our customers and we had this like 
Princess Diaries That's movie so night. Cute. So we like did it in like the big, um, mm-hmm. what's it like the 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 projector, the projector, yeah. And then we had like a station with like popcorn and candy. And then like I had like a lot of my like brand like friends like donate things from their brand. So we had like mouth tape for them and cute. like all these things that they'd need for sleep. So like we had um, PJs from Set Active. We had um, like lip balm. No, sorry, the jet lag mask from um, Summer, Summer Friday. So like my friends donated too. And like we had press on nails from Quickie. So like people were so excited because that's like the things that we get mm-hmm. as like influencers. And I'm like, customers should get that too. Damn, like they're yeah. the ones spending the money. Yeah. My dream for a friend of mine, like I want another house in Dallas that's just like the office. I want one of the rooms to be like the, I want a set for house guests, but I want a, an entire house that like operates as our office, but also so that we're able to, one, we can shoot all of our content there because it'll be like the friend of my house. And then I want to be able to do like dinner parties in the backyard. I want to do- That's literally my house, except I live there. Yeah, see, I want that, <laughs> but I don't want to live there. So I really like that in the next year is the goal. It's like, I want to like make a couple hires and then I also want that. I love that. Because we need like an office space. And also like, I'm just like, I can't do it. I literally, I'm like afraid that I'll die. So uh, I just heard too much in my life. I need some sort of separation, yeah. but that is like my dream. Like I want to be doing events and stuff like that, especially because it's a home brand to have a house is like yeah. the dream, you know? It honestly is very helpful. Like most of the events that we do is in our backyard. And like, honestly, I have like no separation from Array. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like me and Array, we are one at this point, yeah. you know? So like my team works out of there. We, all our content is shot in my house. But like, you're right. Like, I mean, having a second house, like you should totally do that because it it just, it, it's a lot more personable than, yes. I don't know, like doing things in an event space. Yeah, exactly. And I like that we're able, I like that it just feels like so much more personal. Like yeah. I like that we're able to just spend all of our time in one place and like when, you know, the consumer is like seeing us shoot all this content and they're coming to that actual place. Yeah. Like it's an actual like invite, like I don't know. There's like so I have so many ideas for like things that I want to do, but like the house is like the dream for me. I love that. You know, I love that. What advice do you have for managing a team? Ooh, um, I would say hire entrepreneurs. I think that's where it starts. Like, I don't hire people. I have to micromanage because that's literally the worst use of my time. So I think how you manage a team is largely based on like who is on your team and like how much handholding do they really need. For us, we're lucky. Like our team is very self-sufficient. So like once I say something, like it's kind of like like they know how to like make it happen and then have like regular touch bases, obviously. For me, I also think like working in person collaboratively once a week at least I would say is really helpful because it kind of allows you to have a pulse check on what everyone is working on. Something else that we have company wide is called top fives. So essentially at the beginning of every month, we sit down with every single team member and go through like what their top fives is. And so like the top five is like, what are the biggest needle moving things that you're focusing on this month that like if you accomplish, like you have like, you know, moved a mountain essentially. So like whatever that is, like, you know, it could be like, for me, like, oh, I want to partner with like a large hotel or like I want to like finalize the concept for this launch or whatever it is. Or like for a social media girl, it could be like, um, I don't know, like get this many followers or like have this much engagement, like whatever it is, like having really like tangible like goals on what you're wanting to um, accomplish. And I think what that does as well is when reviews come along, nothing is a surprise because you know that like these were the goals that I presented to you and I hit them where I didn't, Mm -hmm. you know, and like then as well at the end of every month, it's like a mini review that happens that like, okay, like how'd you do on your top fives last month? And um, you can go through and see like, oh, like, you know, someone hit all of them and, you know, they've like just done a phenomenal job or like someone maybe didn't hit all of them or maybe the goals weren't set aggressively enough. And like for other people, for example, um, maybe you meet on the top fives a little bit more often. So I have certain team members who I meet like for a review of their top five every week just to get a pulse check of where they're at because certain roles like changes very quickly as Mm -hmm. well. So yeah, like having, I think getting aligned on what goals are, what your expectations are, I think is super important. What are some things you feel like businesses waste their time on? Um, Unnecessary meetings. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I, I, I just, I feel like everyone's goal should be how to minimize meetings, not like how to get on as many meetings as possible. So take back your time where you can and like shorten the meetings. Like it's very rare that a one hour meeting is necessary. It's typically only if we're doing like something like big, like a brainstorming something like around product or like we have a launch coming up. Like that's when we'll have like the one hour meetings because it's more than just like this is what we're doing. It's like a big 
group thing deciding on concepts, which is a little bit different. But yeah, I think companies waste their times on unnecessary meetings. Like you don't need to meet that often. Like, what are you fucking talking about? Like have a, have mm-hmm. an agenda, get through it. And, and that's it. Like move on to the next thing. I feel that way even on the influencer side, when you get on a call for a campaign, then they're literally just reading the deck to you. Like, it's like literally just the deck. Like, there's nothing else to it. And it's like, I would understand if it was a little bit, if it wasn't you just reading off the deck. But it'll be like a 45-minute call and they literally just sit there and they read the deck It's off. the dumbest thing. Yeah. I, I've done it once in my life. Uh-huh. Like, once in my life where I had to be on one of these calls and I was like, I will literally never do this again because it is... It's the biggest waste of my time. How do you ever. get out of them? No. Like you'll just say, I'm not gonna take a meeting for this? No, I'm not gonna take a meeting. If it's not if it's not worth my time, why mm-hmm. am I sitting there? Like I say no to everything. And like, I mean, a lot of things go to my EA and she will kind of like guard my time. But like I'll tell her, like, I don't wanna take this. Or like if I can push something out, like say for example, there is someone I need to speak to. Okay. Like say, I don't know, someone has sent me someone that I should be meeting with for like an app or like something that I need, okay? Investor. But I don't need to meet with them today because it's not relevant today. I'll schedule it out three months later mm-hmm. because then maybe it'll be a little bit more relevant. But like Nish and I are both like this where our time is like literally our most valuable commodity. And it's not just us, like it's our whole team. Like we tell everyone, don't take unnecessary meetings, take it when it's necessary. But outside of that, don't just feel like you need to be on a meeting. Like how stupid. Yeah, it really is just a waste of time. Yeah. What has it been like bringing on investors? Um, it's been good for us. We were really selective. We've only raised a tiny, tiny bit of money and we bootstrapped our company for the first year and a half. Um, we brought on investors when we felt like we really needed a little push to like grow a little bit additional. We don't need any more money. So we don't raise any more because we were profitable. Um, so I would say for anyone who's thinking about it, number one, really think about whether you need this or not, because when you're raising money, it takes time away from you being an operator into you being someone who's raising money. And it really is a full time job. I remember when we raised um, for the first time, it was literally us on calls after calls for three months straight. Like we barely had time to work. It was the most stressful time of my life. So just know that like, you know, we read these headlines on like TechCrunch and Forbes. It's not glamorous. And like we should really stop that cycle of like glamorizing, raising money. Like it's not that glamorous. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's number one. So really evaluate. Do you really need the money? And like, do you really need it from investors or can you get a loan? Can you use, um, you know, like a payment provider like Settle? Is it just for inventory? You know, like really evaluate why you're taking the money. Make sure that when you do take on investors that they are thought leaders and your partners because there is truly nothing worse than having an investor who you dislike. Because once they're an investor in your company, you're married. There's no getting rid of them, right? So you have to really, really, really be particular. So what I would recommend is even when you're not raising money, start to get to know people so that when it is time to raise money or if it is at one point time to raise money, then you at least know who you like and who you want to get into business with. So really take your time to get to know someone. Like that's not gonna be over like two calls. That's like over a period of a year sometimes, you know? Like we're not raising money, but sometimes we'll still take calls with investors just because it's like good to get to know them. Like maybe they have a good reputation. Maybe like they've reached out a bunch of times and you you never know, like you could learn something. So I would feel like, like I feel like being really particular about who you're working with, taking your time with them and, you know, um, like really evaluating if you even need the money, like that's what I would do. But for us personally, like I love our investors. They've been a really good source of support and we've just lucked out. Also, we don't have very many of them. We have a very small cap table. So yeah, we were like very particular. Anyone I hear talk about raising money, they're always like, it was the worst time of my life. It doesn't sound fun. It's really not. Like, yeah. and so that's what, I mean, you know, if I were to go back in time, I think that there's so much I would tell myself, like Nish and I discussed this loads, that like there's so much we could have done to like optimize our finances so that we wouldn't necessarily need to raise money at all um, or, you know, like raise way less, you know? So you just, you learn a lot more along the way. And don't get me wrong, like this is coming from someone who's incredibly grateful for our investors. But at the same time, if you don't need to do it, then don't do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's something you feel you wasted money on in early days? Ooh, what did we waste money on in early days? Maybe like certain influencer partnerships. Like it's mm-hmm. few and far between, but sometimes like some of them were like just not a good 
use of money. Um, but outside of that, really nothing. Like we've been very, we've been good about our money. It's just we didn't necessarily know how to use it in the most optimized way. And there's things you can do, like, for example, getting a line from, you know, a company like Settle. Like we use them to float our inventory, for example, using Parker for like credit cards, like things like that. So that's like stuff I wish I'd have known because it just would have allowed us to like float our finances better. But in terms of wasting money, because we never raised a ton and because um, it was our money for the first year and a half, I think we were just really inherently scrappy. Mm -hmm. And that's just something that stays with you. Um, But yeah, like I think like if if I can think of anything, it's maybe influencer partnerships that weren't like super ROI positive. But even those I don't regret at all because they gave us like like a billboard almost, you know, so it's like a little it's It's awareness versus. Yeah. yeah. So nothing was a waste. (laughs) Yeah. And I feel like it's hard when you're like, it's hard to waste money when you, like, it's easy. I can imagine when you, like, if you come in and you have like $20 million to start this totally. company because you're just going to spend money, you know, when it's your money and you're starting and you're really like bootstrapping this, like it's a lot harder because there's less money to waste. Oh my God. Yeah. You like know? we didn't have millions of dollars, you know, we had like, we had like such limited funds. And then like when the business got started, it was literally us using whatever money was coming in, like it was all based on profits, you know, so we didn't have all this money to like waste on things. And I think like, I think that's a lesson for a lot of entrepreneurs that if you can, especially if you're in a space that doesn't require a ton of startup capital, if you can just like do it on your own, it'll allow you to be so scrappy and like really you'll find ways to stretch your dollar further. Mm -hmm. I like obviously funded all of, I'm also not interested in investors. I'm just like asking for the viewer, but I like that it's all my personal money that we started with and obviously now it's just all going back into the business Mm -hmm. because it made me take way more ownership of it totally like it was actually i think it was very beneficial for myself i agree i absolutely agree like that's what i'm saying like if you can do it on your own do it on your own because it you will just you'll care more Mm -hmm. and like you'll be really particular because you know that there's not money to waste totally so yeah (laughs) Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on. We actually recorded a pod swap. So you guys can go listen to the other episode on the Dream Bigger podcast. But where can they find you? Okay, so you can find me at Sif Hyder on all social media platforms. You can find Array at Array.com or Array.co on social and the Dream Bigger podcast wherever podcasts are found. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you for having me.